Okay, so this is just a quick video on uh, performing a numerical simulation or numerical solution to the SIR model. And so uh, uh, what I'm going to do first is uh, create my differential equation file. And so I need to uh, create an empty file. I'll call it uh, SIR equation maybe dot m and okay uh, did that come through yep okay i'll get rid of that and now i'll go to my homework page it's in pdf right and i can just copy and paste that little piece here so copy and paste that here place just paint plain text I suppose good oh SIR equations maybe I'll change that to equation <laughs> uh, that should be consistent by the way um, if this is equation that should be equation so those should be matching okay oops did I just delete that <laughs> thank you for not deleting that okay so notice that beta and gamma are here right I don't know if you can read that well, but I think um, you've seen that I've just copied it right out of my PDF file. Uh, I think my connection might have gotten loud. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to use ODE23 to do this. Um, so let's go ahead and set up our um, initial population and everything. So let's suppose that I've got, um, oh, how many in my S and my I and my R? How about uh, 2,000? Oh, how about 20,000? <laughs> and then how about how many infected should we start with? Two? So we'll try that. And then zero for V, and I'm going to call that my Y in it. And uh, okay. And then, you know what? I think. Uh, ODE23 likes to have a row, but I think it actually changes this to a row. Uh, oh, I should just go ahead and make it a row instead of a column. We'll have to double check that. Okay, so the initial, so the time span here is just going to be one or zero to whatever. Um, how about 100? We'll give that a try. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, what equations am I using here? I have to be careful here. I don't have a population of 2,000, right? I have a population of 1, meaning 100%. And so instead of having 2,000, uh, let's say that we've got uh, 0 0.99 and a 1 there, a 0 0.1, 0 0.01. <laughs> okay, and now let's see what happens. This is my T-span. Okay, I think that's what I need. And now I need to call my ODE23. And then we'll say at SIR equation, comma, uh, T span, Y in it. I think that's the right order. I'll find out shortly. Yes, that does seem to be the right order. Good. So now we'll plot uh, T and Y here. Oh, nice. Does everybody see that? And by the way, you can also type in uh, legend with a, a apostrophe S I R apostrophes around the three things, and then you can get a little bit of an, uh, a legend here. How about if we take a look? Can't I? Uh, I thought there was a way of. Uh, changing the plot. So I don't see that option here anymore. Uh, render new plots in line. How about if I take that out? What's going to happen now if I do a plot? Is it going to plot in a new window? Has anybody checked that out? Oh. Uh, oh, that's good. Does everybody see this? You can download your plot as an image. I like ping files myself, PNG, so go ahead and uh, download that as a ping file, and then you'll have it there. And that's what you can turn in for your uh, homework, because uh, we're going to be plotting these multiple times. Uh, in fact, 
when the homework asks you to plot the i function multiple times, what you might do, let's see, I need to get rid of that. Oops. Oh, it gave me a legend there. That's nice. Um, plot line four, plot line three, okay. Um, not sure how to get that back out, okay. So uh, we'll just plot the second column, and to plot the second column, you'll just type in plot, ah, sorry, type it, T and then Y colon comma 2. And then you'll see in this top plot, right, this is now a plot of the I function, the infected function. And so what you would want to do then is you might say, like, I1 is equal to Y colon comma 2. And now we'll go back in and we'll rerun our code. Ty equals od. So now, oh, before I rerun my code, I need to change one of my parameters. And so, for example, how about if I change my beta to uh, one fourth? I'll hit save. And now we'll go ahead and run this again with all the other parameters the same. And now I'll say i2 is equal to y. Uh, two, and so now I'm going to plot uh, t with i1 and then t with i2. Oops. Uh, oh, did I change my length? Oh, I did. Oh, sorry. Uh, I messed that up. Let me change back my beta to one half. Oops. And I'll save that. And let me rerun that from scratch again. So that was. Uh, okay, so I reran that. Now I need to save t1 as t, and then i1 was y colon comma 2. Okay, and um, now we'll rerun it again after I change my beta to 1 fourth. Save. And now I'll be able to run it again. Okay, now I could say like t2 equals t and i2 equals y colon comma 2. And then I could go in and change my t and y again. You know, you because we're doing this multiple times. But instead of doing that, suppose that I've got just these two that I want to look at. Then I can say t comma i1 comma t comma i2. Oops, did you see what I messed up there? That was T1 and T2. That was the whole point of that. There we go. Good. And so now you can see what happened. Between uh, beta being one half and beta being one fourth, right, I ended up, when beta was one fourth, I didn't really even have a uh, pandemic, right? Because the infected went straight down. But when the beta was one half, I did have a pandemic. So between one half and one fourth, right, you see the, the changes. Okay, and so one of the questions then is to investigate how these things change over time. Okay, now if you wanted to plot more than uh, a couple of these, you can just keep on doing this. Uh, for example, uh, let's maybe run one more. Uh, maybe one, oh, maybe three eighths, just for fun here. Oops, save. And then I'll run this one more time. And then I'll say t3 equals t and i3 equals y colon comma 2. And now I'll plot those three together. So now comma t3 comma i3. So you can just keep listing them this way. Oops, didn't I get everybody? Uh, T3, didn't I save T3? Oops. Oh, no, I overwrote two, T2, didn't I? Oh, well. Uh, okay, how am I going to fix that? <laughs> Let's see. Save that as T3. T3 equals T. Oh, you're getting to see me do this live here, and then we'll redo the one-quarter run here. There's probably a better way to do this. I'm sure you're... You people in uh, CS should be thinking about different ways of doing this. Uh, but for those of us that aren't in CS, we're just bungling our way through here. <laughs> okay, so now we'll run this again and get a 
get T2 redefined. Okay, so now T2 is being redefined, so T2 equals T now. Okay, now I can do the plot correctly, and we'll get all three plots, and you can see the three three plots there. Um, the colors are a little bit uh, light, but you can see that uh, the number between a quarter and a half gave us a curve that ended up being sl a slight hill there. Okay, I'm giving it away. I'm going to stop here. Uh, try it out. It's kind of fun to do some numerical simulations here just to try out what these, just to see what these curves look like. And also, just as a reminder, you can download your plot as an image, so that's handy. All right, see you later.